so obviously it was the Green Party Conference this weekend in Manchester, and I think it is right for me, I think, to cover this, because if there is one thing I have constantly gone after the Green Party for, it has been their complete and absolutely anti-stance on building HS2. And trust me, trust me, some of those things are going to come up again. Because this vote, or specifically uh, Motion E01 at the Green Party conference did pass. However, want to stress, and I must stress this, this just passed. So we may be here this time next year saying, um, yeah, remember how um, the Green Party passed uh, that HS2 uh, legislation? <laughs> and trust me, there are some interesting language, shall we say, used around this. Some very interesting language used around this. However, first of all, before we get into what changed and what the motion has was um, that was being voted on, I think we have to uh, you have to understand what the Green Party position was on HS2. First of all, the Greens will come out and say, "Oh, we were never, we were never against HS2. We were just against the roots." And you're like, well, okay, if you were so against the root, why then were you not saying, well, actually, we could go this way for this route or, or this way? That was never, that never happened. The Green Party never, ever, as far as I am aware, never put forward any alternative route ideas for HS2. It never happened. The other thing they will obviously say is, oh, we are, you know, we are still for, um, you know, high-speed rail. And then, of course, the biggest rail infrastructure pouring of money, biggest you know, rail infrastructure project the UK has ever had, HS2, oh, we're really against that. And it was because of their nimbyism. And trust me, everything you see here today is going to be nimbyism baked in. And it almost feels like also Greens for HS2 because there were some amendments added to this that they, that they got put forward, which really feels like they did this to try and appease the NIMBYs. And guess what? You can't ever really appease the NIMBYs. And I'll tell you this now, some of this stuff is going to be used to block any movement on HS2 we might potentially see in the future. Just trust me. Oh, boy. You give the NIMBYs an inch and they will take a mile. But the other thing is also worth changing because this has changed. There used to be, again, there used to be, if you were a local councillor and the HS2 was like going for your constituency or, or anything like that, if you even went to a consultation with um, HS2 Limited, you were instantly booted from the party. Now, that appears to have gone. Appears to. Um, I haven't been able to find out if that is still on the books as well, which would be very interesting considering, yeah, we've changed our stance, but um, yeah, if you go to a meeting with uh, HS2 Limited, um, you're no longer part of the group. I'm not going to lie, that would be still kind of hilarious if that's still on the books. Uh, but I think that has changed as well. Uh it would be hilarious if that stayed. But anyway, before we do get into this uh, and this change on the Green Party, again, I, I don't think it's the ma a massive change, to be honest. And given the fact that this won on a very slim majority, we think we might be here next year saying that there's been another change on the stance of HS2 for the Greens. But before we do getting into this, uh, please do remember to click on the like, share, and subscribe button, the Buy Me Coffee link, where you can well buy me coffee, the Patreon page, the YouTube thank you button, and of course, the, the Pony Club down below as well. So let's go cracking on into this. And the first things first is we have to cover Greens for HS2. Uh, and Greens for HS2 
obviously, as they are, there are Green Party people who are in favour of HS2. And this was their little mini statement, the news, announcing that their motion to support HS2 had passed. So this is what they had to say. So our motion at the Green Party conference in favour of investment in high-speed rail for the Midlands and the North was passed. This brings now the party into the position of supporting HS2 in full and Northern Powerhouse Rail, but but with important caveats. Read about it here in our conference motion. We'll be getting to that motion in a bit. And this is where it gets interesting. <laughs> Cause... So, here we go. We know members will be confused and or upset that what seemed like a baked-in party policy has changed. And many will now be questioning whether the party is for them anymore. We hope to reassure them that the green principles and policy goals remain absolutely central to the policy. <laughs> so, I, I love that. That even Greens for HS2 are acknowledging the fact that opposition to HS2 had been such an inbuilt factor of the party for so long that they are still worried that this might cause people to question whether the Green Party is for them or not. And bear in mind, we have been seeing a lot of things from the Greens that they are now anti-compromise, that we are not going to compromise, that we are not going to dilute the Green Party policy so that we can, you know, appeal to a broader and wider electorate. Because that totally sounds like a terrible bad idea, right, guys? Appealing to a wider electorate. What a terrible idea. Anyway, we might cover that another time. But so anyway, that was that was the news. That was the news that this um uh, party conference uh, motion had been passed. So what was, of course, the motion? So the motion is, do, 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 here we are. So this is the conference motion, uh, EO1, uh, Green Rail Strategy for the Midlands and the North. Uh, so here we are, we'll skip to the, th the thing here. So about the motion. So the motion had these core parts in it in play. First of all, to recognize that the climate uh, crisis demands that we transition rapidly away from high carbon methods of transport, such as cars, trucks, and planes, to low CO2 electric public transport. So this is this is where it's going to drive the anti-green, the anti-HS2 people in the Green Party bananas, because their one of their big things was that high-speed rail did not lower CO2 emissions, that it was in insane building hs2 uh for that reason so oh boy like i say there's going to be a lot of trouble ahead for what ultimately this means for the policy that hate that the greens are going to have to put forward for this and we are going to keep an eye on this that's for sure but trust me their should we say change of heart on hs2 i don't think is going to be as as, as pro hs2 as people think it's going to be so recognize that, of course, overall travel uh, must reduce, but a larger proportion of what we still need to do must be done by low carbon modes. And this means a big increase in trips done by rail. I love all, I love the fact, oh, yeah, we've got to recognize that we've got to over sort of reduce travel. So how are we going to do that? People at the end of the day are still going to have to travel to work. Um there's a, there's an obsession with a lot of green parties that you know everywhere including europe we've got to like cut travel almost completely and again i don't understand it but it's a big factor of many of like the 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 core voting green block of the ecological uh parts of parts that they've got in their party so uh, the next point, recognize that this means we now need to invest in new high-speed railway lines, which will add now much needed capacity by clearing bottlenecks and removing the long-distance express trains from the congested current network. Exactly. That is why you build HS2. Don't even need the rest of it. You don't even need the rest of this. You just need that. That should have been enough. That alone is reason enough. <laughs> that is reason enough 
to build HS2 alone. Really, you need nothing else in the motion bar this. Everything else is to try and satisfy a ecological part, environmentally focused part of the party, which, bear in mind, this weekend has really, really tried to maintain its control of the party because there's a lot of stuff that happened this week in the Green Party. Not only like uh, the, the trans stuff that went on, if you heard about that stuff that's gone on there, there's a load of stuff that happened and they have really tried. And like I say, this motion barely just passed. Um, so the final one is recognize that only a full network compromising the quote Y of HS2, including the Eastern Leg now to Leeds, and the Western Leg to Manchester, plus the east east west link of the Northern Powerhouse Rail now maximizes the capacity gain where it counts, the Midlands and the North. Again, you really only needed these two. Like you really only needed these two for the motion. That that's that's it. That that is the justification. And it's a very legitimate justification for not only, of course, HS2, but Northern Powerhouse Rail. Uh, that would, of course, be the first east-west line um, built in the UK for decades. Uh, and, of course, big plan for Boris Johnson. He was going to build it, and then it just got smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, till now, I think it's between, I think, Bradford and Leeds. Again, good for Bradford, of course, but not good for the rest of the north because it's much, much more needed to help improve the capacity up here in the north. So this, in the amendments, is where things will change. This is where things are going to start to get with these. Because, oh boy, are the NIMBYs going to do this. So, first of all, amendment to try and hold HS2 Limited and the DTF to account. First of all, being now fully transparent and timely with all data on habitat impacts using the latest biodiversity metrics, including all types of habitat, uh, taking the utmost care to now limit the impact of biodiversity, bioabundance, and making sure that there is biodiversity net gain of at least 10% or more. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> that's that's going to be interesting when the NIMBYs take a hold of that. Gee, I wonder why this amendment passed with large with a large majority. Uh, having independent monitoring now of habitat uh, impacts and re uh, remediation of this uh, and making sure that all affected stakeholders are now promptly compensated for the impact on them. Uh, they were all going to be properly compensated. Uh, there were HS2 was going to do that. There was a big plan by HS2 for, oh, you want to make sure that we're environmentally friendly? Well, here is our 10 pledges and promises of what we are going to do to improve, you know, make HS2 more green as we go on and go forward. That, of course, it wasn't enough. It's never enough for the NIMBYs. So, Amendment True uh, is the local transport revolution. This amendment now calls for capacity uh, release enabled by HS2 and Northern Powerhouse Rails of existing railway networks to be prioritised for local and regional passengers plus freight. That was always going to be the case of what would happen. Um, the benefits of this uh, now improved services should be widely spread as possible across the network, from Bristol and Aberystwyth in the southwest to Lincoln and Newcastle in the north, uh, northeast, trying to enable a local transport revolution. Uh, the Green Party is long supported, um, except it hasn't. It's been mostly focused focused on bus uh, and bus routes, um, not trains. So there you go. And then this is interesting to try and get it, get the uh, have it labeled England only, which again is true, but it would have some improvement for Wales. Um, but then the rail railway system is always very bad. Rail Wales does need a um its own. I've I've talked about this before, having like HS2, 3, 4, and 5. There should be like a, a Cardiff, like HS2 that maybe goes to Birmingham or, or something like that, uh, done. But Wales uh really does need again a lot of investment when it comes to uh, not just rails, but a whole east of things as well. So those are the three amendments. And like I say, it's amendment one uh, that I think is going to be used most by the NIMBYs to really try and kill any progress on any HS2 lines that ultimately do get built. So what was the response 
from the Green Party itself about this. So this is what it, they have said. This is the Greens' official press release here. This is their official statement on this. So, uh, so the title is, The North must now benefit from HS2, said the Greens. Well, yes, that's why you build HS2. <laughs> it's what the Green Party has been stubbornly against for all this time. So, delegates of the Green Party conference in Manchester have now voted for HS2 to be funded and completed in full, including the entire eastern leg and, the, uh, and an underground through uh, the station in Manchester Piccadilly. Uh, the policy development comes as now phase one of HS2 between London and Birmingham is now well under construction. Something, again, that the, the Greens were fully against. Even now, with, with that, the London to Birmingham, that needs to go to be re-expanded. We've got to build it properly so it's not six trains, that it's 12 stains, trains, so it's a bigger platform. So it doesn't just become a glorified shuttle service. You need those full 12 platforms in operation to be running. Will the Greens support that? We haven't seen if the Greens are going to support that. But of course, that'll cause a, a lot of consternation. Of course, you may remember um, the environmentalists trying to block this when they built that massive underground tunnel. If you remember that not too long ago. So... Uh, commenting now on the revised Green Party policy, the co-leader Carla Denier said this. He said, the Green Party has long supported the principle of a, again, I find that so funny to say that, has yeah, long supported the policy of a new north-south uh, high-speed rail line, but had serious concerns about the specific route of HS2 and the environmental impact of this route. As I said a moment ago, what was the the alternate route what was the better route for hs2 to take the greens have never said anything they've never proposed any alternative routes they just did it just to oppose it so this whole thing of oh we, we've uh, we've long supported the principle of, of of this but then they did everything to oppose it so yeah uh I'm taking this change of, of heart on, on, like I said before, of HS2 with a massive grain of salt. So, however, the first phase of HS2 between London and Birmingham is now well underway, and most of the environmental impacts of construction have already been baked in. So this, <laughs> so this is a pragmatic decision by the Green Party. It moves us on. Why now? Why all of a sudden the change now? Is it because you've had all these new members come into the party and uh, are now saying, well, well, actually, we, we should be building uh, HS2. And now there's been a big uh, argument between the NIMBYs in the party and the anti-NIMBYs. <laughs> sure, it has nothing to do with that. And that these amendments that we just saw were nothing, you know, totally just to appease the NIMBYs, right? <laughs> So that they can block it if they if they need to. So anyway, back to this. So crucially, we now have acknowledged that the northern leg of HS2 was always the most important in terms of trying to tackle capacity issues on the railways <laughs> as, as, as addressing regional inequalities. So the line must be completed in full. <laughs> oh my word. The Greens were against HS2 and the Northern Leg, and their grand idea for the north was instead oh uh we need to build more railway lines well, okay where are we going to build these rail lines uh, we don't know but we just need to build more rail lines in the north and that that'll solve it that'll solve the problem uh yeah this this is a huge policy u-turn huge policy u-turn if this was labor if this was anyone else um the Greens would be getting absolutely crucified on radio, TV, media, etc. Um, but they're not because they're the Green Party, let's face it. So uh, they continue to say, we must also say now loud and clear that our railways uh, have to be built right. Again, the caveat there, not we have to build railways, but the railways have to be built right for habitats and wildlife and for local transport users 
uh, for affected neighborhoods and for government coffers. Greens will not support blank checks uh, or offer uncritical endorsements. G. There's a, there's a lot of caveats going on in supporting for this HS2, isn't there? There's a lot, awful, awful lot of caveats going into this, this new change of policy, isn't there? Anyway, we need to move ahead at great speed to try and shift travel away from cars uh, and flights to public transport. HS2 in full can play an important role in achieving that shift. Um, not to many anti-HS2 people. Oh boy. Uh, and we went over that some time ago when the when the Greens for HS2, uh, if you remember, was going over that big um, blog they wrote and their response to like the anti-HS2 crowd. Uh, on that, <laughs> if you remember that. <laughs> so, anyway, that's what Carla Denya had to say on that. Um, then they have a local uh, Green Councillor from Bradford who talks about uh, getting, um, you know, their, their now support for the, the Northwest uh, Northern Powerhouse Rail uh, to be supported. So, um what what do I think to all to all this going on? Well, I think it should be pretty obvious. Um, take this with a massive pinch of salt. There seems to be baked into this. You saw that with that speech, with that uh, statement from Carly Denya. Lots, lots of caveats for them to go at any time if their core environmental support decides. We're not going to support that HS2 that they can turn around and say, ah, no, we are still supporting HS2. But don't forget, this has to be built right for local wildlife. And thus, the NIMBYs are granted another, another victory. So while you see the Greens for HS2 uh, supporting this, wait until how the policy eventually gets crafted and how the, if you know anything about how green party policy gets crafted on this oh boy wait for that <laughs> this, ooh, <laughs> yeah um we're going to eventually see how pro hs2 the greens have really become and honestly given what the greens h2 uh, statement was the amendments that they had to pass they had to add in order to get the the emotion to pass the statement there from Carla Denya. There's an awful lot of ifs and buts about suddenly supporting HS2 for the Greens. Awful, awful lot of ifs and buts and maybes and ands and yeah. So we'll see what happens, but. I am not buying that the Greens are suddenly magically pro HS2. So there you go. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. And of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.